to meet here. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me welcoming him. Good morning, everybody, and thank you, uh, Himansi, for that uh, wonderful introduction. As I said, I'm quite well known. I think hardly anybody knows me. <laughs> so, nevertheless, uh, let me quickly uh, have my panel on board here. Uh, it's a wonderful panel uh, because we have the entire ecosystem, uh, a sample of the ecosystem rather. We have a tool maker, we have an OEM who is also a startup, and we also have representations from the human suppliers. So, let me start with the startup first. So, may I invite on stage Mr. Vikas Gupta? Founder, CEO, and CFO of E Ashu Automotive. May I now invite on stage Mr. Akshay Kalyanpur, everybody knows him, Director of the Vehicles Engineers. Mr. C S Agarwal, AVP, Component and Tooling Development, Dumax. And of course, Mr. Ravindra Gugle, Senior Manager Purchase, Engineers in Plastics, Tata Autocom. Why there is a need for increasing localization? What are the challenges in achieving that? And what are the opportunities? And we'll talk about the various aspects related to that. I would request all my panelists to speak uh, briefly so that we can have some time for an interaction with our audience also. Right? Yeah. Okay. So let me start off with you, Akshay. We know what is the status of the tooling industry in India today. We talked about how automotive, which is the biggest customer of the tooling industry, it is the fifth largest industry in the world. But tooling industry, which serves that industry, is not even among the top ten for some reason. We know that there are only 4,000 tool makers in India, out of which only 700 are Tango members. So, why are we in this situation? A very simple question. Since you are one of the loading, leading tool makers here, we want to understand. Why are we here? We know what is the situation, but why are we in this situation? So, uh, I'll say it's it's not uh, one thing that's affecting us. Sure. It's an amalgamation of a lot of things. It's the market, is the price being paid to the tool maker, is the availability of the machines, availability of the raw material. So, a lot of factors are actually affecting the stagnancy of this uh, uh, tool room industry, I would say. And uh, it's also the situation of chicken and egg. So whether the tool makers improve themselves or whether the tool makers expand or should the automotive OEMs be the ones to take the initiative to pay them better, pay them frequently. And uh, also there are areas where uh, the customers prefer their older tool makers overseas with a certain amount of risk involved. So if my customer would want to take some risk with a local tool maker, again the tool room will develop. But there is a risk barrier, sometimes the customers does not want to uh, cross that. So, and also now the lead times of tools are sh shrinking. Earlier we used to get 24 months, then it came down to 18 months and now within 12 months is the launch of the vehicle. So as the situation becomes more critical and also globalization steps in, there are tool makers outside with a bigger ecosystem who can deliver the tools in the shortest amount of time. So, I would say it's not one factor but many factors which are contributing to this situation. Okay. Mr. Kuhre, you mentioned about this chicken and egg situation. You know? It's a very typical situation. You mentioned to me the other day on the phone that uh, I don't go to the Indian tool maker for certain components because they don't have the capability. And Akshay said, I won't have the capability because the com company is not coming to me, so why will I develop the capability? What is your take on this? Hello. Uh, I agree with what Akshay said, the chicken and egg story. But at the same time, he also mentioned there is a lot of pressure from the customer on OEM and tier 1 also. 
the real hard place from the endosome, which is this entire hog is the endosome. OEM is not an endosome. Finally, me buying the car is the endosome. If I don't get correct quality, correct required cars in my time, I'm going to buy some other brand. So car makers lose their market. So one thing is that pressure which passed on to the tier one. Let's say we are the tier one. Then if my support, tool maker doesn't support me, and as sometimes like Paresh said, time, delivery, everything, if it doesn't happen, tier one is sandwiched between OEM and the tool maker. So he can't afford to take risk, otherwise he won't survive with that tech task. Finally, we are in business, we can put our business at risk. But at the same time, I will suggest if our own tool makers come forward, they know which tool we can make, but we are not getting chance. For example, let's say bigger tools are there, like the bumper. OEM goes to the outside. But I know I have capacity. Let me go up front to the tier one. I have this, I have developed this. I know you are like from so and so. This is my design, this is my everything, proactive. Give me a chance. Let's see, let's work jointly. Why we treat this side of the table is a tier one OEM and that side of the table is me? No. Let's move that. Let us work as a team, co creator. Things will change. Things will change. And just to quickly tell from uh, our OEM data, we are again from the data to come. Atma Nirvar Bharat is our tagline for this year. And I will be happy to share whatever now bumper tools we need, we are sourcing from Google. Already order the place, people are working on that bumper tools, people are working on IP tools. This is happening for the first time. So we trust our own industry, no doubt. Only now industry has to race to the audience and deliver beyond our expectations. Let true sense customer delight comes in. Our business is there. So the collaboration will happen once there is confidence. Okay. Confidence will come once there is capital. Right? Yeah. Agarwaji, you have worked with a lot of tool makers in Southeast Asia. You know, China, Taiwan, yeah. Vietnam, even Korea for that matter. So what is it that they have that Indian tool makers do not have right now? And what is it that we need to do to reach their levels? Again, I say uh, that is for uh, man, machine, material and methods. So, uh, material, same material trade we can get in India, but the uh, problem is the delivery. Normally, bigger blocks stick a longer time in India compared to easily available in the China. Sometimes I get a tool developed in a one and a half month, but the time is taken for delivery of material is the that time. So that is also a concern of tier one as well. That uh, actually we are so, second is the man skill power. So skill man power. Then the, the availability of material from outside the country is at very low. That again is a problem. So if somebody wants to President and Mr. Vice President, I have a question for you. So. The Plastic Association is doing something with regards to skill development. Is there a scope of collaboration between TAGMA and similar other associations? Mr. Shand would like to answer that. Yes, sir, it's possible. We are talking and we are also, that's the reason they have also come here. Uh, we are talking and surely there is a collaboration can happen in the future. They've got a nice setup created. It will be used by TAGMA members also. And we have also announced in the past as Bhaskar Diwali, we have announced in the past to TAGMA members about this IPMA Skill Development Center. Okay. We will announce it. We will have okay. a collaboration and we will announce it. Wonderful. That is a very encouraging sign. Thank yeah, you, sir. Sure. Yeah. IPMA uh, has designed it keeping in mind a uh, plastic industry requirement, but it can be tailor-made to suit tooling industry also. Am mm -hmm. I right, Jasmine? Sure. We will have a detailed discussion and uh, we will do it. Yeah. Sure. There's one more audience uh, question. We can take that. Can we have the mic? Uh, that row. Hello. Hello. Yes. Uh, first of all, thanks for providing this opportunity. Actually, it is not just a question. 
but uh, a point I would like to put to the everybody out available here. Uh, what we normally do that in the trainings, uh, one of my you know friend here on the dais has suggested uh, that we can have one trainer. Definitely, first of all, I should say an applause for this gentleman who has suggested that. But at the same time, my experience is, if we put an onus to one person for training, normally everybody believe in the organization, it is his job, it is his KRA. My job means assembler work is assembling, finisher work is finishing, and his job is training. So it is not my duty to get trained, it is his duty to train me. And that becomes the first bottleneck. What we have implemented in a couple of organizations that we have made, that we have identified a couple of people, those are good at various jobs, because one person cannot be perfect at every job. One person, for example, for tooling industry, one person could be good at fitting the tool, one could, person could be fitting at matching, one person could be good at fixing, one person could be uh, for spring-loaded systems, something like that. Let's identify different people. Let them, okay, you are going to train on this topic, this topic, this topic, this topic. And preferably, if we are at that maturity level, when this nomination comes from the person itself, the first idea is, let us see that if somebody can nominate himself, okay, sir, I can train for this. I can do this. First thing. The second thing is, if you in person, then it is his only duty. Now, if it is divided in a couple of people, then you have got six trainers, then everybody has to spend just a couple of hours every month, not a couple of days every month. Maybe it can be more effective. Then second thing is, when so many trainers are there, there is one more very big benefit I have seen, that now when he is training, so at least he will make sure that his person's doors are directly under him get trained. And if there are six trainers, so it means six departments you have already covered for training. Right. Wonderful point, sir. Thank you so much. Right. So, so these are a couple sure. of my suggestions. Yes. So yes, basically what he is trying to say is that uh, there is a need to have multiple trainers and there is a need for people to proactively learn. Yesterday I was listening to one of the sessions and uh, one gentleman mentioned that uh, the biggest problem with Indian manufacturing industry is two attitudes. One is I know everything and the other is chalta hai. So this I know thing has to be addressed through training because we obviously don't know everything and we have to have, I will come to you, I will come to you also lady. So Hello, can uh, we add, excuse me, can I add one more point, small quickly, point? Quickly, quickly, because others are okay, also there. Yes, quickly. Yeah. Only thing is, one more thing, mm. we would like that this training, how many training hours, <coughs> how much is the training effectiveness have the people learned, this should be added into the KRA plus top management should ask it. Most of the time top manager ask how much is production, how much is sale, how much is payment recovery, mm. how much is profit, how much is loss and that is their KRA ends. Let's put a couple of these training and other people development areas into questions of top and then it will percolate to the So bottom. learning and development should be part of top management's KRA. Right. Absolutely. Vikas ji, aap kuch bol rahe I wanted to add one more perspective here. See, in our industry it is very autonomous activity. So initially we started hiring the ITI people as Akshay has also mentioned. But later on we realized that the learning curve of those ITI people is very poor. That is one aspect. The other aspect is they work as per their clock, watch. So we need people who are dedicated when there is a work, they are there. So what we started doing is that we have started an association with the, with the academy. So the association between academy and the industry is a must required at this point in time. We have set up our first incubation lab in Rurki Institute of Technology, Rurki. Now people, the students which we are hiring from there are already trained on the activity which we are doing in our works. And hence, this is the way we are getting the trained resources rather than getting the resources who are raw and then we are training them. So that's another aspect that we have built and I think academy and the industry need to work together, join hand. Yes. Uh, yeah, that is Mr. Uh, what we said. We have a training institute like uh, Diet CPET is there. Then 
people uh, getting training over there, but now the missing thing is on job trainings. Maybe last one year, two year, they can uh, join industry, maybe hire by the tool makers, and yeah. then they will be familiar with the work uh, yeah. atmosphere uh, quite early, rather than four years spending in the institute. So that on-job training, as he said, that uh, they, he also taking the passed out from the training institute. Yeah. So this may, this way, we can have a skill manpower and uh, also train in the same industry. Like we have a molding shop, we have a sheet metal shop, die casting, wherever they have interest, the same industry they can join mm -hmm. for maybe one year or maybe two year on job trainings. They will get stipends and also they will earn also something that tool making industry will pay. So this way maybe we can encourage the people to come up in Absolutely. the... Absolutely. Very valid point. We often talk about making India the factory of the world and uh, something that Mr. Panchal mentioned uh, today during his quick chat with uh, Mr. Shan that has stayed with me, that thought has stayed with me. He said, he described the place in Mumbai called as Lohar Chal and he said, why can't India become the Lohar Chal of the world? That is a very liberating thought, you know, we should all take it very seriously. And Mr. Gogle, my question to is uh, in the same context, we spoke about uh, the current scenario how can we become the Lohar Chal of the world? What are the challenges that we need to address on priority? I know it's a tough question. It's not but a tough question. Okay, great. Because answer is already available in this hall. <laughs> because he asked the question, immediately brainstorming started and everybody replied. <laughs> when Paresh Bhai said India to be Lohar Chal, let us understand what is India. All of us is India. Yes. It's not only me or Paresh or you or you. So many trainers are available in this hall right now. And the moment the problem came on the surface on the table, solutions started pouring in. So if we had that dialogue with each other, now another friend is having a training center in Mumbai, but he is underutilized. That clearly shows there are a lot of communication gaps. If we fill these communication gaps, I need this, let it be on surface, there are many people ready. Many seniors must be ready, willing to visit tool room and train or mentor the staff or the sta workers over there. Forget about money part. But we, are, we need to grow India. We need to develop India. Let us have that goal clearly. I am not developing Sri Devi tool, for example, or CAM tool. I am going there to develop Indian skill. If that is the goal, we will come out of this competition. Let us work together. As Brilliant. he was also saying, let us work in the cluster. Right, right. Brilliant point. Absolutely. So, first understand what is India. Come Absolutely. out of this. Yes. This is the India. True. And the moment I start doing it, lower child is possible. It is made rather. I will not say possible, it is made here. Only everyone needs to commit. Okay, I will spend two hours a week. Which tool room needs? Let me know. I am ready to come there. And two hours I will do this, this, this. As that friend suggested, it should be checked and whether training is effective. What I did there not just tea and coffee. Whatever I imparted, my knowledge, my experience, whether that team has gas, and at least one percent is uplifted. That's it. True. Someone else will come next day. Someone else will come next day. That small one, one tiny percent is going to make hundred percent soon. Instead of one trainer, one mentor working, let the entire industry to mentor each other. Let us have a healthy competition. See, there we can say, any tool makers, come and see my operations. I am ready. We admire Toyota that they open their factory. Why we can't open our factories? Mm. What's so great? If he can do it, I can do it. True. Absolutely. Japan doesn't have lower chal. India has a lower chal. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes, I'll Let go back lead. to the audience now. Let us lead. Yeah. So, uh, I'll come to you, ma'am. Uh, since he raised his hand first, yeah. Can we have the mic for this young man here? In the third row. Yes. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, I am representing my company, Store Supply India Agency. So we are of course a 100 crore company and we have been established like 50 years back into steel trading. So two years back we started uh, representing and we are agents of a Indian steel manufacturing company by the name of Starwire. 
Okay. So I believe everyone is aware of this company, Starwai India Limited. What's your question? So now my question is, like all the tool makers and dye makers, they claim to us that, sir, we do not want Indian make tool steel or dye steel. We only want material based out of, let's say, Japan or Germany or um, uh, Brazil, US, Taiwan, China, everything. But Indian steel to hume nahi chalta ji. Hume to ji best quality Germany ki aati hai. Hmm. So how should we go about it? Where is the dream of this five trillion dollar economy or make in India or Atmanirbhar Bharat? Where the dye makers and the tool makers do not have confidence in Indian make tool steel grades or dye steel grades. So this is my question. How should I go about it in promoting Indian steel? Well, uh, wonderful question. Ideally, Mr. Piyush Goel should be answering this question. <laughs> but I'll still ask uh, Akshay I'm to sorry, do I'm sorry, but Mr. Piyush Goel is not over here. <laughs> <laughs> but I think Akshay can answer that question. Yes. So my initial opening line, uh, I had said risk perception. Um, and unfortunately, the, the barrier is too strong. So for that barrier to be crossed, we might have to do a lot of technical papers with the OEMs. Because as a tool maker, even I can't choose the steel. It is mandated by the OEM and the OEM has spent a lot of energy and probably a channel which cannot be again and again gone to and said that we want to change. So it is something that, you know, almost like cast in stone uh, that uh, these three steel makers have been approved. Now forget about it, keep it aside. So it's not something that frequently changes. But we need to have a very strong reason to convince them that I am giving you a delta, I am giving you delivery, I am giving you this price and the quality also matches. So when that happens, then there is no reason not to shift. But, uh, don't mind me saying this, but it takes a lot more time in OEMs. Perhaps an owner-driven company might take a decision. Somebody who is sitting on molding and tool making he will be much quicker to adapt than OEM. So we might have to set some goals that you start with this company, then bring the case, case study, then we can present it to OEMs. This is my opinion as a tool maker to you. Okay. Hope that satisfies you to some extent. I know, I know, I know. Uh, please. Fine. See, try to understand my dear friend. It's not that German and European people, any customer, Everyone is here customer again, I am repeating, that we love them. We are paying more money to them. As Akshay says, suppose if I make a bumper tool, to make the tool itself it takes seven, eight months. Something goes wrong at the last moment of my trial. Where do I get this eight months, twelve months time? It's not possible. Me as an Indian industry, am I that confident my product is 24 karat gold? This is a German, this is a Chinese and this is an Indian. No difference, zero difference. As he says, chalta hai. Sir, wo thoda unnis bis ka fark hai. Then we come out of it, all these, our philosophies. Hath ki paach unglia sev nahi hai, kal mangalwar tha, sombar tha, nothing does. It doesn't help in business. Honestly tell me, which hospital will you enter? If there is a board, one ppm. Which airline you will enter, suppose they put the board, 0.1 LPPM. Forget one, 0.1. Let it be Indian airline, let it be European airline. I will not put my life at stake. If I am in that 0.1, if I know, I can make 100 crore insurance and I can enter it. Friends, we have to be that sure. These people have done R&D tremendously to come to that level. We are also doing Indian companies. I am not saying no. But we need to present to the end customer, again sitting over here, everyone end customer, what I am giving you at par. Not that you buy and then I will prove. This is the proof, this is the paper, this is everything. I am doing tested, tried, well. I invested in trying, I made 10 bumpers, done so many cross section. The th hardness from the top to the mid of the section, uniform. But you try and then you let me know if you understand my product. Nobody is going to invest, sorry, slightly negative. 
बट लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड वी आत्मनिर्भर भारत और वट एवर वी से इट इज माई भारत इट इज माई इंडिया इट इज मी सॉरी नॉट इट द प्राइम मिनिस्टर वॉन्ट्स टू बी मेक इन इंडिया आई वॉन्ट टू मेक इट इन इंडिया अदरवाइज आई विल नॉट ग्रो so we are ready to take risk but it should be calculated risk and not at the cost of any end customer right. true true one, okay one more thing i will tell it sure. is not only the rm rm is a, even whatever overseas tool maker there are using the same germany or japanese grade because even china also is a big tooling industry we never uh, accept china make china make steel they always use german make or other uh, good uh, proven Jap uh, japanese or german steel same grade steel we are using in india even you can say the hotner systems so is there is any one any indian manufacturer is there we udo hrs all are uh, overseas, overseas means uh, germany yes. or china or italian or there korea so oem so like uh, over everything okay now localization means it doesn't mean everything will look localized so we have localized with some uh, he said risk is there so we using import version or import accessories opportunity is there for everybody is there so maybe it will take time so other people to develop like uh, same rm or something they have to prove themselves so that is the wait and watch yeah yes yes ma'am thank you so much um Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Alka. Uh, I represent uh, company Horizon Industrial Products. We are into sheet metal stampings, and as well as we make press tools and dies. I have a question, with all due respect to the OEM and the tier one uh, sitting on the dais. You said the tool rooms need to uh, invest, and they need to scale up, uh, and they need to take that risk. Uh, yes, uh, that's very true. Uh, but then the fact is, because I have a manufacturing plant. when i buy a machine my roi is calculated uh, within a few months but when i buy a cnc machine my roi takes years because my money is blocked i get only 30% advance if the customer is very good like mm steel uh, maruti said yesterday or otherwise i get amortization so amortization how do i calculate my roi then how do i invest then in the 30% the tool uh, component development timeline is one and a half years practically from day 0 to uh, the sample try out to the final launch of the car so then my uh, my uh, money is blocked in that uh, date sale how do i uh, you know think if i borrow bank loan i cannot calculate my roi so um, it's a appeal and as well as a question then how do tier ones and uh, oems expect the tool rooms to invest and grow when they don't have a support of the government or the uh, the oems then what do what do tool rooms do sir that's a very critical question thank you ma'am very very interesting question and and so very interesting question so uh, so i would give our perspective see we have recently set up an a design and engineering center of our own now with that design and engineering center what we are doing is that we are inviting more and more tool makers more and more people who are interested in in making certain components or parts with us we are doing the the design the engineering part of all those tools all those component parts at our end and we are supporting them in terms of committed sale that that we can give to them now these are the two activities that we are doing and i think investment part has to be taken care by the tool room maker or tool tool maker only but we can support them with with the specific design with the development of that particular tool and as well as commit them a particular revenue over a particular uh, time frame so that they could recover the cost of their tool that is what we are doing currently hope that answers your query to some extent quickly we have got only 4 minutes left thank you just to answer uh, young jet young gentleman's question i would like to say uh, the same situation we were having in mitsubishi when we were not having our plant in india we used to take 2 to 3 months time to get the special tools made from japan 
and our customers for not giving us that much time. And when we introduced our new plant in India, in Aurangabad, people used to say, or our customers used to say, Sir, I need special tools, but I need made in Japan. Then we used to say, Sir, it is made by Mitsubishi. And Mitsubishi has got the plants all over the world. We don't even know what products are made in which plants. So it's a Mitsubishi quality and you believe in that. And believe you me, now it's more than five years, whatever products we make, customer don't ask us, it is made where. Why I'm saying this? Because you know, in some companies or uh, multinationals who are the market leaders, they have to do the walk the, walk the talk. Because someone has to take the stride. First step. And once you take that, now everyone believes in that. No one says it is made in which plant or which country. Everyone says it's Mitsubishi, it will work. So what I want to say is that in India also, we have got a lot many good talents. And sometimes it takes time. But when it goes, people will not ask you where, when, how. You have to do, you have to do walk the talk. And that's what is more important. And believe you me, not only in India, Indian manpower is recognized all over the world. I travel all over the world. When I go outside, people say, I need Indian people. True. Yes. Absolutely. Indian peoples are not recognized in India, but once you go abroad or out, you will be asked, I need Indian peoples. Because Indian peoples are much, much more talented and hardworking as compared to other kids. So let's believe in ourselves. That's what it works. Thank you so much. Very Thank important you so much. point, yes. So we'll sum up the discussion quickly and I'll come to each one of you to have your concluding thoughts. 30 seconds to each of the speaker. Let me start with Mr. Agarwal. The most important thing that has come out of this discussion is that there has to be no compromise when it comes to competence, quality and delivery. If Indian tool makers are able to achieve these three things, we will be at par at anybody, right? So how do we achieve it? 30 seconds, sir. I think that uh, everything is feasible in India also. It will take a time and uh, localization means there is opportunities to everyone. Like uh, tool maker as well as uh, opportunity for all, uh, RM suppliers, accessory supplier. But as a team or we can say as a whole, we have to work together and like us, we as a tier one, we have to take risk also to develop uh, lo more and more uh, support to localize localization. The way uh, skill member, as you said, uh, we have an opportunity to develop skill member also. So this way we can uh, give more opportunity to tool makers in India. Thank you so much. Akshay, thank you. Akshay, the question is to you. Yeah. You said that we need more Sri Devi tools in this country. You need more competition only then tool maker industries. How do we get more Sri Devi tools? How do we, how do we get more CAM tools? What what needs to be done to achieve that? Uh, I know 30 seconds with, is With your permission, <laughs> uh, if I am uh, I am free to talk, I would say that uh, it has to be driven by them. Absolutely. Could be a tier one or the OEM. Uh, pay us better. Uh, pay, pay us frequently with better payment terms not linked to the SOP. Thereby, I can pay my vendors, I can pay the small uh, one machine, two machine shops who, who does work for me. Only then will the ecosystem grow and the whole tooling uh, uh, will grow. Because only if I grow, it's not a win-win situation for India. I need another 50 companies like me to grow so that we are attractive to export to the world. True. Ravindraji. Yeah. Very important point you said. Pay us on time, pay us frequently. Well, I'll go back to... Uh, that's right. what the lady also said. Yeah. No, no, I have only one answer for his question. Quickly, we have to wind up, sir. Uh, huh. Only one minute, one huh. uh, few seconds. Like, uh, he said, if you have a quality yeah. and delivery commitment, you will get cost also. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> well said, sir. Ravindraji. I will just go to Paresh Bhai, Canada. Hmm. Transparency, trust, delivery on all that commitment. If time comes, customer will pay you advance, 100%. But if you fail, Next time, no tool maker will get advance. So it is a responsibility on my shoulder that I am representing the entire tool room, tooling industry of the India. Nobody should fail in commitment. Absolutely. Customer is also facing a cash flow problem. He is also facing a money problem. No car buyer gives him advance money. 
that next year I'm going to buy a car. These are my 15 lakhs. It's True. a business. Yes. But yes, let us come to the table, discuss out solutions are possible. 100% solutions are possible. The way we are discussing right now, such discussion can happen frequently and things will work out. Absolutely. Solutions are, sure. are possible, but we need time, trust and transparency. No time. We can do it fast. Okay. We, we can see your grow. thoughts. So, so I'm in agreement uh, to Mr. Google what he has said. See, uh, the OEM or the tier one manufacturer is willing to pay. The only thing is we need commitment, we need timely delivery, and we need the cost efficiency. These are the three factors that are required. If those three factors are there, I don't think there is an issue with the payment or there is an issue with the, with the commitment of giving the order from our side. Thank you so much, Vikas Ji. So with that, we come to the conclusion of this panel discussion. I think it has been a very educative and engaging experience for all of us. So can we have a round of applause for all the panelists here? Over to you, Himanshi. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as you put your hands together for the panelists, may I request you to please put your hands together for our moderator as well. Because that was an engaging session and I could see that it was uh, also very interactive. We did get a lot of queries coming in from all of you as well. May I please request um, moderator, Mr. Mudolkar, to please hand over a memento to each of the panelists that have joined us here. To Mr. Akshay Kalyanpur, Director, Sri Devi Tool Engineers, also an EC member. To Mr. Ravindra Gugale, Senior GM, Purchase Interiors and Plastic Division, Tata Autocomp Systems Limited. Mr. C.S. Agarwal, Assistant Vice President, Competent Division and Tooling, Lumax Industries Limited. And Mr. Vikas Gupta, Founder, CEO and CFO, E. Ashwa Automotive Private Limited. May I request Mr. D. Ravi, Executive Council Member, to please join us on stage. May I request Mr. D. Ravi to please join us on stage. May I please request uh, Mr. DM Shergar to please join us on stage to hand over a mentor to our moderator, Mr. Niranshar Mudholkar. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I please request you put your hands together for all of our panelists and the moderator. Please come together for a group picture. <laughs>